Well, here we are on a sunny Saturday evening down on the plot. It's been quite cloudy most of the day, but warm. And the sun's just come out in the last half an hour. So that's quite nice. Hi Tracy, thanks for joining me down at the allotment this evening. So, how's everybody this evening? Or this afternoon? Or this morning? Good evening Valeria. Thank you for joining us. Oh, it's lovely in Belgium. Have you had it quite warm, Tracy? Bill and Val, thanks for joining me. You've just got back. Oh, I was up uh, at the plot this morning and I've been home. And uh, I thought I'd just nip back on for half an hour or so this evening. Um, just to say hello to everybody. So I'll start by uh, showing you around a little bit. So this is the uh, wigwam I've got for my sweet peas. Um, I've had quite a bit of problem with pea and bean weevil. They tend to bite round the edges of peas and beans. Valeria, you were on your veg garden today, but talked too much with friends and didn't do much work. <laughs> yeah, that can sometimes happen if there's a lot of people about. So, sweet peas, a few of them are growing all right. A few of them looking a little bit yellow. Um, but they are starting to uh, grow up the canes now, so hopefully they should be all right. I've also put some cosmos in this bed at the back there and this bed is the one that's uh, got the plum tree in it and doesn't uh, do very well with fruit and veg hello Susie from the United States welcome hello Spencer thanks for joining us this evening um, so this is the plum tree that's in this bed now that's not doing very well at all I've had a lot of problems with dieback and all sorts of things eating. Oh, you've had all your four little ones with you. That's good, Bill and Val. That's nice. Um, I think the problem is either aphids or some sort of grub. If you look um, between the leaves, there's all sorts of little... Uh, little things in between the leaves so um, let's see if I can show you I did see uh, like a caterpillar amongst one of them the other day no, it's not very easy to show but you can see there's been a lot of dieback. back not many plums there's a few plums on the tree so I'm gonna have to do something drastic I think I'm gonna have to uh, spray it with something uh green fly and ladybirds destroyed the pests oh right okay so maybe it's just green fly but i wouldn't have thought green fly would have done that made them uh, shrivel up i don't know so i was thinking maybe spraying them uh, i have heard that you can spray with bicarbonate of soda and uh, so I might give that a try. Sage, chives, garlic and peppers. Is that what you've been growing, Valeria? Just show you, oh, the bees are on the blackberries. 
they've been uh, pollinating this well. Now you might hear a sort of funny noise in the background, I'll just show you something. Um, oh thank you Spencer, I didn't quite know I'd got there, I knew I was pretty close to 1.2. Um, you can see I've got these pieces of foil on string, um, that's to try and deter the uh, birds off the peas because I've seen, or somebody's seen, some sort of uh, grouse or pheasant or something around and about. So, um, and this, uh, I was talking about pea and uh, pea and bean weevil damage. Have a look at that. See the leaves are all being chewed round the edge. That's what the pea and bean weevil does. It bites little chunks round all the leaves. So I have a lot of problems with those on this uh, site, to be honest. Um, Bill and Val, I saw your comment briefly pop up about how my peppers are doing. When I go in the greenhouse, I'll show you those in a few minutes. Yes, so I've also been busy today planting my French beans. So they're all now planted. So I've got, um, along this side I've got Blue Lake and on this side Cobra and these are Dwarf French beans which are a variety called Canadian Wonder. So they're all growing along here. And I've also got some tomatillos growing. So um, never grown tomatillos before, that's what those things are there with the yellow flowers. You can see them. Don't know if has anybody else grown tomatillos? Um, I've never grown them before, so I'm interested to see what they're like. Bill and Val, you have Canadian Wonder. Do I use 4G for streaming or do I have a Wi-Fi connection? No, it's 4G. I'm not uh, anywhere near a Wi-Fi um, because it's um, I'm not at my home. I'm at the allotment, which is so I have to use the mobile phone signal. So hopefully it won't drop out, but it does sometimes. So apologies in advance if that does happen while we're doing the live stream. Sometimes it reconnects. So uh, we'll just see. Hopefully it won't tonight. Do I know if it uses much 4G? Ooh. Yes, it does, to be honest. Um, I think about half an hour of streaming uses about 300 megabytes of data, something like that. Three to 400, I think. I have got, I've increased my data plan, so it does allow me to uh, stream. Um, leaks. Yes, apologies if it does drop out. I can't tell whether it is or isn't. I can only tell if it uh, completely drops out. So apologies if it does hiccup. Um, leaks. They've started to go to seed. These were leeks that were planted late last year. So really, I probably should pull those out. Um as has the Swiss chart, the uh, chard. Um, that's starting to flower as you can see. But I don't mind that, it looks pretty. I will, uh, I don't need that space at the moment so I'm just gonna leave them there a little bit longer but then I will uh, take them out probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this is fennel. 
This is bronze fennel here. Yeah. It has an anisey smell. Um, got a few garlic here. Now these garlic are doing better than the ones in my other bed, which I'll show you in a few minutes time. Um, and a few onions. Have I looked at the rubber seed trays? Um, I saw your video on them. Uh, they do look good, Spencer. So uh, yeah, well, well worth uh, checking out Spencer's video on rubber seed trays. Okay, Bill and Val, thank you for joining us. That's brilliant. Thank you everybody uh, for joining us uh, this evening. That's great. Um, this is a tomato. This is a tomato plant that I've uh, just planted out. Uh, Yellow Perfection, I think, was the variety. We're trying this one outdoors. And this is a squash. So this is the squash, um, pink banana squash that I had from uh, Erica and Liz Zorab's, uh, from Liz Zorab's seed from the uh, big pink uh, squash she had. Over now to the herbs. So this is the oregano or oregano as the uh, our USA pronounce it I think um, this is chives here the chives have done really well they always look nice the bees love chives and I've got curry plant here so that's just flowering that smells of curry and then we have uh, lemon balm. Don't know why that's sort of different colours, but it's sort of, uh, it might be a variegated version, to be honest. Seems to do okay. And this is um, rosemary and some thyme. You're going to do a video on mint soon. That's good, Spencer. That'll be interesting. Oh, yes, you're right, Tracy. Liz did, did do a vid, video on chai flower vinegar. That uh, did look interesting. It creates a pink coloured vinegar. Strawberries. Now, some of these look decidedly ropey because th what happened was I've dug some of the strawberries out of a very weedy area that I've got next to the strawberry patch. So these, there were quite a few runners that sort of rooted into this area. Okay, Spencer, thanks very much. Great um, for you to join us this evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, so we've got some of the strawberries were rooted into here so I moved them from there into here and they've not uh, liked the transplant I'll try to keep them watered right um, now I'll just show you over towards where the greenhouse is this is the two tomatoes that have been growing in the air pots one is sorry one in the air pot one in a normal pot um, not much between the plants at the moment uh, but they've only been in maybe a couple of weeks so they've not properly uh, got to the point where their roots have uh, reached the edge yet I'd like to now take you into the greenhouse. Oh, first of all, I'll just show you the corn. So this is the sweet corn, uh, a variety called Gold Crest, I think. Ready to go out into the uh, plot now, but uh, haven't uh, done that as yet. And some other tomatoes. These were the yellow perfection tomatoes. They uh, 
need to go out soon. So into the greenhouse, sunflowers first of all. So the sunflowers are, well the tallest one is probably about three feet tall now maybe. Some of them are, uh, to be honest, ready to plant out. Um, but I've sort of been holding off a little bit because of the possibility of cool weather, but I think that's past now. Um, I do have a little bit of an issue, which I'll discuss with you in a minute, about the bed that I'm planning to put the, the uh, sunflowers in. So this is the tomatoes. Uh, apologies my finger then. Uh, tomatoes. So that's uh, piccolo and variety called Mac Cherry, um, a variety called Ildi and that's a beefsteak version and in the corner is a cucumber. Yours uh, is starting to get a bit empty. Yeah, I wish I had, mine was. <laughs> um, I've still got loads of things to go out. So we've got all sorts of tomatoes, um, squashes, cucumber, and over here, some of the things will stay in the greenhouse, like the peppers. Um, I've got chilies, sunflowers, some um, crimson crushed tomatoes, they need to go out. And what else have I got? Mini pumpkins. Um, more tomatoes. Some dahlias at the back. Those are the rest of my tomatillo plants. Yeah, so my uh, my greenhouse is still very full and uh, I'm struggling to find places to put things, to be honest, in the greenhouse now because things need bigger pots and I can't fit any bigger pots. Grow bags, uh, I'm quite a fan of grow bags, Tracy, to be honest. Um, I use them at home. I've got a greenhouse uh, at home and I put a couple of grow bags inside that. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're always useful. Uh, I think you need to use deep grow bags though. Some of the grow bags are uh, that you can buy are quite thin and uh, the thinner grow, grow bags I don't uh, rate. But the thicker ones, um, yeah, they're really good. And the other, if you've got a thinner one, the way to do it, I believe, is to cut it in half and then um, turn it upside, turn each end up and use it as a sort of like a grow sack almost. Um, yeah, so it is worthwhile. Um, hello CB, howdy, how are you? And hello Learning Curve Acres. Thanks for joining us. So uh, CB, you've just joined us as we're in the greenhouse hall. My greenhouse is nowhere near as impressive as your greenhouse is, but um, I've got plenty of tomatoes and peppers that are ready to be potted up uh, or taken outside. Um, as you can see, and I've got my tomatoes on this side with the watering halos which I have used for the last couple of years. They are useful because they allow the water to, to drip slowly into the um, big trough there, which has got compost in. Um, so yeah, there's my tomatoes. Now, talking of tomatoes, I'm gonna take you outside now. And I'm after some advice. So I've planted some tomatoes 
outside and they're not looking very well basically so I'll take you close so my concern is that I have put horse manure down on four of my beds and I saw recently a video from Charles Dowding that said there's a possibility that in horse manure you can get a weed killer that can cause stunting of growth in tomatoes and beans if it's contaminated. Now do you think or does anybody think that that growth looks abnormal? Now I've got it on all of the tomatoes I feel look a bit sickly or is it just that I've taken them outside and they're just not happy? They've been out for about two weeks now these now apparently there's a weed killer called amino pyrolid or something and that can be uh, used by farmers to kill broadleaf weeds so there's that one all of these to me don't look particularly healthy but it could be just that I put them out and they're just settling in and just sulking a bit or it could be they've been damaged by weed killer any ideas yeah Valeria yep yeah, that horse poop has weed killer in it yeah you think that's that's happened then that's my concern really i've so i've dug that into all well four of my beds the uh no dig bed here this bed the one that's got my onions in um and this one here now I do believe the particular weed killer affects some plants more than others. So um, brassicas aren't affected as well as well as badly as um, beans, legumes, and peas. Um, so I've, I'm sort of a bit uh, thing about what to do with them, really because um, I can't possibly dig it all out of all of the beds because it's mixed in with all the soil. So um, I'm sort of um, wondering if I can uh, just try and plant some things that are not susceptible in it and hopefully that the soil bacteria will break down the weed killer. To be honest, I'm not too bothered about the actual tomatoes themselves, Valeria. I've got plenty of tomato plants. So uh, I'm growing, as I mentioned to you, I'm growing them in the, uh, in the greenhouse. But it's more about what else I can actually use the bed for. Um, because I can't possibly dig out all of the soil and compost from four beds um tons that would be tons of compost and i i can't afford to uh, to possibly yeah uh well in hindsight yeah i should know shouldn't know i will know in the future not to to be honest i wouldn't touch all the here again uh, apologies you're going to get a siren going past um it's a little bit noisy Um, I read um, CB that um, 
it does break down in the soil within about 12 months, but it's... Yeah, I could take them out, but as I say, I'm not too bothered about the particular tomatoes. Um, so I think I might have to just try and plant something in here that's not susceptible. Uh, the only problem is I'm, I'm sort of concerned about eating the products that come from them. Um, this bed here hasn't had any manure, so the beans are, uh, are safe, at least. Um, yeah, Charles Dowling did give a list of what you can still plant. I think um, it was mainly brassicas from memory that are not affected badly by it. And uh, I think um, squashes, I've read something about squashes are not affected by it. Um, what I'm thinking about doing with the squashes is planting them in buckets and then sinking the buckets into the soil. Uh, um, really, only because just for the space, um, or I could just uh, dig over the soil. Hello, Chris. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, uh, this evening. But afternoon for you, of course. Um, yes, it is a bit of a worry. Um, but as I say, I can't possibly dig out all the manure that's that's in because it's it'll be well incorporated into the soil now. Um, so yeah, um, you've sort of confirmed my worst fear then, CB, that um, I've got weed killer damage um, in my soil. So um, yeah, that is a, a sort of a, I haven't planted any potatoes this year in the soil, which is at least one good thing. All my potatoes are in buckets here. Um, they're uh, just been under a net because it was sort of frosty. Uh, earlier in the week. Um, the other thing that I'm not too happy about is the uh, garlic. The garlic looks particularly sickly uh, and I think that's nothing to do with the horse manure. I think that's to do with white rot. Um, I've had a couple of the um, there's one. So I'll just pull one of these up. This is a, a, a garlic plant. Um, now, how can you see? You might be able to see that I think there's white rot in this bed which means the onions might not store well they won't store probably um, I will strip these out huh how much did I put in um, it was barrow loads CB barrow loads uh, maybe 10 to 15 barrel loads per bed, um, quite a lot. I'd not heard of this um, weed killer before I watched Charles Dowding's uh, video, so I uh, didn't know of its existence or that it was a thing, a problem. So it was only when I was alerted um, just the other week that I thought, oh, I, bet, I hope my uh, horse manure isn't affected by it, but um, I've sort of been, uh, your, my suspicions were arose when the tomatoes didn't, um,
um, the tomatoes sort of looked sort of not happy and Charles Dowding had said that tomato plants are particularly affected Yeah, so um, I'm not sure about being able to dig it all out, as I say, short of, it's, it will be tons of, uh, of material, so for me to try and get all of that out and then restore the soil, I'd need to buy tons of compost, which realistically I probably can't afford to do. So um, I'm going to have to work with it in some way. Um, but I'm not quite sure how. I, I will have to think on it. Um, yep. Yeah. So, um, the other thing I'll just show you now. Um, what else have I sh not shown you? Is the um, flower bed. So the flower bed's looking particularly good now. These are Californian poppies. And this is lavender roses. They're just starting to bud now. Um, no horse manure was added to this bed, you'll be pleased to know. Um, so they're just starting to tinge. Uh, yeah, I've got some squash uh, ready, CB, yes, I've got um, some butternut squash and um, pumpkins and banana squash. So I do have a few squash. Um, and sorry, we were looking at flowers. That rose is just about to come out, the red one. And what else have I got in here? Of course, calendula. I've got tons of calendula. Yeah, that one is just about to flower. So they'll all be bright and orange soon. Um, Yeah, CB, I'm, I'm, I've, this bed here was going to be my squash bed anyway. Um, yeah, Valeria, you, we gardeners are resourceful, that's one thing, yeah. And we will find a solution for things. So uh, I was um, a bit fed up earlier on today when I thought that... Um, my tomatoes have been affected by this uh, weed killer, but I will think of something. Um, definitely uh, resourceful. Um, yeah, so um, that's the uh, and what is that? They'll have to tell me. I've forgotten. Chard. There we go. It's coming to my mind now. Chard. Uh, that's flowering. Um, I want to see some bees. I've just seen quite a few over here. Um, bumblebees. They are busy pollinating the blackberry. This is the thornless blackberry. Yes, Chris, you're right. If that's what I can do is to highlight to others to be uh, careful. 
and uh, uh, to be vigilant for things that are um, affecting gardeners. Yes, they are beautiful bees. There's quite a lot of bees, a lot of bumblebees about. Uh, see that one there? Let me get close. There we go. Yeah, there we go, plenty of bumblebees on the blackberries. And what else is there to see? Fruit cage, I haven't done the fruit cage, have I? Take you over to the fruit cage. Right, excuse me while I just open the gate. So here we go. So we've got We've got some strawberries here. These are the everlast, uh, ever-bearing strawberries, so they last right way through the season. And we have blueberries. Give you a close-up shot of the blueberries. They're starting to fruit now. There should be a few blueberries on the bushes here. Some more there. Some flowers. Those are the blueberry flowers. And we have red currants. That's red currants growing as a standard bush. And then we have black currants. Um, can you see any black currants? Let's have a look. There doesn't look to be loads on this year. Oh yes, there are some there. I'm just under there if you can see. And what else have I got? Gooseberries. You can see those. Hiya Barbara, thanks for joining us this evening. How are you? Uh, what else is in here? Oh, bind weeds in here. I'll just show you the back of the uh, fruit cage. Unfortunately, my uh, buying weed problem is still a problem at the back of the fruit cage. I've managed to get rid of quite a lot at the front of the fruit cage, but um, I've got a fair bit of it still growing at uh, the back, as I didn't get to dig that out in the winter months. Yeah. There is my nemesis, the bindweed. Um, one good thing about what I've managed to do though is I have managed to dig quite a lot of it out the front and every time I see it coming up at the front of the fruit cage, which there's a little bit here, I've been chopping it down or digging it out as much as I can. So hopefully I'm weakening it. That's my... Uh, plan anyway to try and weaken it as much as I can 
Uh, obviously, I don't want to use weed killer on it. Um, you know, there's various weed killers that you can use, but um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, certainly after the problems we've had with the other weed killer, I wouldn't want to be adding any more weed killer onto my uh, plot. Uh, red currants, plenty of red currants. Uh, they always do quite well here, to be honest. Always pleased with the amount of red currants I get. Well, yes, Chris, it's sort of gone up the side, uh, but it is also growing amongst the plants, unfortunately. Uh, that's it coming out of the top of the black currants. Um, which it does use any plant it can to support itself to grow up. Um, I have a plan to try and uh, sort out the back part of the uh, fruit cage, but it all takes time, of course. Um, so I'll, uh, that may have to wait till the back end of the year. Depends if I can find some time to try and get as much of it out. There's some on the side as well of the uh, fruit cage. And your black currants are in trouble. Black tops and curled leaves. Is that um, some sort of aphid? Because aphids can affect uh, black currants. Or is it to do with the weather. Um, I can sometimes get aphid damage on. Uh, I've got, um, I'll just show you the tops of the red currants. That. I think it's aphid damage if you look underneath. See all those little green fly. So that um, is a problem on red currants. Now, apologies if I'm missing some of your comments coming up. Um, Do my best to read the comments as I'm talking to you. So, um, yes, aphids. It is definitely aphids, uh, CB. Um, just have to hope that uh, the green, the um, ladybirds get them. Uh, I didn't read that comment, so something about coming out of the soil, it came up and went very quickly. Um, apologies, I, didn't read the, I wasn't able to read that comment, and I don't know how to go back on a mobile phone to see the previous comments. Neem oil. Now I've heard of neem oil. Lots of people have said neem oil, but I don't know whether it's a thing over here. I don't know whether you can get it in Britain. Don't even really know what it is. What is neem? Is it sort of some, some sort of plant extract or something? <laughs> uh, you can order <laughs> ladybirds online, uh, Chris, but. Um, they don't stay in one in one spot so if i put them in my fruit cage they wouldn't stay in my fruit cage they'd just fly off uh they might some of them would stay there obviously because there's aphids to eat 
but uh, I'd end up spending a lot of money on uh, on ladybirds that could be here and gone tomorrow. You can get it in the UK, it's good stuff. Okay, is it sort of like a whole food shop type thing or just online? I might try it if it's, uh, if it's good. I just, uh, I'd have to do some research because I've never, never heard of it really. Well, I've heard of it, but I, I don't know anything about it. So, sweet corn, um, that was, oh, garden centres might have it, okay, right, I'll have a, I shall have a look. Um, so this is the sweet corn, I'm not going to, I've held out from putting the sweet corn out because I was thinking of this, uh, weed killer issue uh, we don't have lows I don't think over here CB uh, but um, we do have um, a um, quite a few sort of large chains of garden stores in the UK so I can uh, I'll uh, I'll do a little bit of research and find out. Um, yep. Right, so uh, we've been going now for 47 minutes approximately. So I'm going to start. Hello Kelly, thank you for joining us. Uh, I was just about to say I'm going to start winding up, but I will just uh, stay a little bit longer. Um, you'll be interested in this. Um, we were talking about Charles Dowding and the uh, problem with horse manure and weed killer. Um, I think I have got that issue. Um, my tomatoes are looking very sickly in the beds that I've put horse manure in this year and they're sort of looking a bit shriveled and not particularly happy so um, I think I've got the issue with that pyrolid weed killer I'm not joking <laughs> no, I wish I was um, because they're um, they're not they're not looking happy. The ones I planted out a couple of weeks ago, uh, the, you will have seen the video probably only a few days ago um, that I put the tomato video in. But um, there, this I recorded it maybe a week or so ago, and since then the tomatoes have not picked up. They've looked pretty rubbish and I'm now concerned that I've got the um, weed killer in the horse manure that I dug into four of my beds. So um, what I have done to try and confirm this, Charles Dowden had suggested um, planting some beans using the soil. So I've uh, in the greenhouse, hello Nick, thank you for joining us. Um, in the greenhouse, I've got five pots with soil from the various beds. Four of the beds which I've added the horse manure and one with the bed that I didn't add horse manure to, which is the one that's got all my uh, beans in, my uh, climbing French beans. Um, so I'm 
going to grow these beans on and see if they show the classic signs of weed killer damage, which apparently is curled leaves. Uh, thank you, uh, Learning Curve Acres. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, it's a good idea to do my own test. I, I, I think conclusive, it's fairly conclusive from the, how the um, how the tomatoes look, really. But um, I'm going to try it with just with so, some compost and some beans. Uh, you think you'll have to use buckets and put the sweet corn in the beds in those buckets? Mm, maybe, yeah. I have got um, one area that <laughs> I hasn't got anything in at the moment, which uh, I'm digging over. This area here had just basically weeds, which is, but it's quite a large area. Just showing you, I've started to dig it out today. Um, was going to be where I was going to put a carrot bed, but um, I now need somewhere to plant my sunflowers because I either have to plant all my sunflowers in pots or I'm going to have to put them in an area that I know is not being damaged by uh, weed killer. So um, this bed here. I think it's going to be my sunflower bed, but I might also use it for sweet corn. Um, both of those grow relatively tall. Uh, it shouldn't shade too much. The only thing it might shade is some of the, uh, the fruit over there, but it's uh, brightening up at the moment already. So that's my sort of uh, contingency plan, if you like. And the other one was to grow stuff in buckets. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yes, I suppose I could, but <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I think that might be a bit of a problem because uh, all my bind weed is growing amongst my fruit, so I won't be adding any uh, horse manure in the in the uh, fruit cage. No. Uh, was it brought in, or was it locally sourced? Um, basically, one of the other plot holders managed to get it supplied, uh, and uh, sort of. Um, it was dumped at um, inside our um, our gate of our allotments, and anybody could help themselves to it. Um, so um, yeah, I, I didn't realise that there was any issue with horse manure, to be honest, at the time. So uh, lesson learned. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've got no idea, to be honest, the source of uh, of it, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if it was to be to be fair to the person that supplied the horse manure. I guess it's the person that grows the um, the hay that the horses eat that's the, uh, the issue, because they're the way the one that will have. Um, you bought four bags of Westland before the Charles Dowding video. Yeah, um, cow manure. Yeah, to be honest, we've used I've used cow manure on on the on this plot over the years before. When we get deliveries of manure, it can that can be uh, cow manure, but we've also had loads of bags of horse manure uh, dropped off over the last few years, and that's just been rotting away in my compost bins, and I've never had any issue with that. But maybe because that's uh, sort of rotted well down before. Uh, being used. Uh, my big issue is that f four of four beds have had this horse manure on, and they're big beds, so you can see mm, they're about. Uh, don't know, two and a bit meters uh, square. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm trying to trying to trying to be um, positive about it. I'm not. I, I wasn't feeling very positive earlier on today, but um, talking about it does help. Um, I can't possibly dig out all four of the beds. 
uh, this was going to be my no dig bed. <laughs> uh, that might be uh, um, not the case anymore. Uh, yes, Callie, um, uh, brassicas are not affected in the same way or um, squashes, CB said squashes. Uh, and I think I've read that about squashes. Um, so um, I've got to decide. Um, you've got a courgette plant growing in your compost foot pile. That's good. Um, yeah, squashes are sort of... Um, what I'm thinking about doing with the squashes is I've, grown, I've put one in one of these flower buckets. Just take you over here. Sorry if it uh, was a bit quick then. Um, this is the pink banana squash. So what I was thinking I could do is either sink the uh, bucket into the soil and then uh, just grow it uh, from the inside there. So uh, I guess there is a slight chance of contamination, but basically it will be growing mainly in the compost in the bucket. Or basically I could just decide to plant to leave things uh, on the surface and grow things on the surface, like uh, leave them in buckets on maybe some um, some of uh, the uh, sort of landscape fabric stuff. But um, really, I need to do a little bit more research about how long it persists in the soil because if I can encourage its um, degradation, if that's the right word, sooner, then um, I'll be doing that this season, trying to, uh, to make sure that um, it sort of degrades in the soil as quickly as possible. I do understand from what Charles Dowding said, I think, that it does um, break down by soil bacteria, but um, obviously it needs to be well incorporated into the bed for that to happen. Um, that bed, as you can see there, that's the cardboard. Uh, it's got the manure under the cardboard. So the worms will be uh, Depend on how much rain and watering you get over the next few months. Um, Chris, to be honest, the company that makes the stuff will will say as long as it's been used in accordance with how it should be used, there shouldn't be a problem. Um, I don't think that they will because how would I know which company it was that provided the stuff that was used? Because it's not just one company that create that uh, makes it. It's um, it's got lots of different names from the uh, memory. So um, I won't be able to blame one one company against another. I guess. You've done a trail with cardboard. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to have to get my thinking caps on. Thinking cap on. Yeah, Chris, but I suppose that you could argue it's my fault that um, that um, you know, I didn't uh, do a test before I get using the the manure. Um, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Um, you know, I I didn't know of the issue uh, when I. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm. I, I know you're not suggesting it's my fault. <laughs> All I'm saying is that um, it's one of those things that um, it, you know. It's happened, I'm going to have to deal with it in some way or other. 
yes Kelly and I am going to try and stay positive about it and, and think of a way through um, gardeners are resourceful people and um, I will find some way of um, being able to grow stuff uh, thanks CB, thanks for joining us today. It's been an hour, um, so I am now going to um, think about winding up this uh, live stream. Um, so um, thank you everybody that's been able to join me uh, this evening down at the allotment. Yes, uh, Kelly, I know what, you, uh, what you're what you talking about there. Municipal comp compost is one of those things you don't know what they've used in, in it, but um, you've just got to uh, hope that uh, you don't get a weed killer on in, in municipal compost, I guess, but I think it's less of a problem um, than uh, this problem with the horse manure, I guess. Um, right. So um, thank you everybody for joining me down at the allotment this evening. Uh, it's been great to have you all along and give me a little bit of uh, moral support about my uh, uh, problem with the uh, horse manure. Um, so I'm going to leave you with my normal ending to my videos. Um, so. Thank you very much for joining me at Nick's Allotment and I'll see you again next time.